Today I'm going to show you how to tat a four-pointed flower. Today I'm going to show you how to make a four-pointed flower. You can add split rings to it to make it larger. You can add beads to the, pe the pico loops in instead of having the loops. Um, you can add it as is to a bracelet. You can honestly add a metal Christmas tree ornament thing to it and stick it on a tree as is. You can add a jump ring and make this a uh, necklace piece. It's a really good pendant for little kids because if they break, you can get it done in under a couple of minutes. First, you're going to need a crochet hook you can see. Today I am using a 1.6, but get something you can see because ultimately, if you can't see, it's not going anywhere. I've got my um, tatting needle. It is, I bought it from a Handy Hands, actually I bought it from Hobby Lobby, and they come in a kit and there was different sizes. There was one that was really tiny that you use size 20 thread. I can't see that. There's one that's bigger that you can use for the size 5 or size 3 thread. I like the medium one because it works really well with size 10 crocheting thread, which is what I have here. It's the one I can see, so go with the one you can use and you get the proper tension on the needle because if you use too small of a thread, you're going to have gaps in what you're doing and that's it doesn't look as good. I threaded it and I've got about an arm length away that I'm going to start with. I'm going to start adding the first double stitch. And since when I put it on originally it gets kind of backwards, I just let it go around so that it's working where all of the stitches I'm going to make are on the left side of this needle and then the back of the second, the second half of the stitch. We're going to make five of these stitches on here. So we're going to make the front half and the back half of two, front half and back half of three, front half and back half of four, front half and back half of five. And we're going to make the first of three pico loops. I'm still going to call them loops. And you want to make these not on the small side, but about medium. If you make them a little small, that's okay as long as you can still see it. So kind of get a good measurement. And then the front of the loop and the back for the loop. So the right there is actually a pretty good. You can make it a little bit larger if you want, but not much larger, but definitely don't try not to make it small enough where you can't see at all. Okay, so now we're going to do five of the double stitches. One, and then the first and second half of two, first half and second half of three, first half, second half of four, first half, second half of five. Then we're going to make the second of three pico loops, loops. Say loops. And then, okay. And then stitch one. And back half of two. Front and back half of three. Front and back half of four. Front and back half of five. And we're going to make the third stitch, or the third pico loop. And then one, which actually that doesn't, I, I never count that one. So we're going to make stitch one, first half, second half of two, first half, second half of three, first half, second half of four, first half, second half of five. Okay, so now we're going to have three loops and for everybody who's a visual learner, what we've done is we've created we started at this point. We've made one, two, three, and then the five stitches to meet back in here. So I'm going to take it off the needle and make a ring out of it. To do that, I'm just pulling the tail end over the needle. And I'm going to pull the needle through, holding on to the top couple of stitches, and then using my pinky to kind of make sure that it doesn't um, tie itself into a knot when I pull it all the way through. And I'm going to pull that a little extra tight. The reasoning for making kind of small loops but not really small loops is we're going to uh, end up putting the needle through here. So I'm just kind of tugging them 
to make sure that I can still see them when I get done. Okay, so now I'm going to tie a knot by sticking the needle through the part that's connected to the ball and then pulling it back through itself so that I get a knot up here. When I do that to get the knot to sit flat, I'm going to turn the bottom piece that you're working on so that I get a nice little semi-square knot design. And then pull that tight. Don't break your thread, but definitely pull it tight. Okay, and this is the center loop. Ta-da! For the second half of this, we're going to make the first ring at the top of the knot that we just created on the center piece. To do this, we're going to work in rounds of three. So we're going to make the first stitch, uh, or the first half of the first stitch, second half, first half, second half, first half, second half. So now what we have is we've got center ring done. We're making three double stitches. We're going to add a small to medium pico loop. And I don't count this when I'm counting my stitches. So now we're going to make three more double stitches in the back half, and the front, and the back, and the front, and the back. Okay, we're going to make another one. And you can make it small, medium, large, dealer's choice. I'm just going to make mine all still kind of small, just for consistency purposes. And then that's the stitch I don't count, so we're going to make stitch one. My fingers caught. Stitch two, stitch, three, okay, and we've got one more pico loop to, do, to go, so the first half and the second half of the one that I don't count, still decently sized, maybe want to make it a little bit bigger than that, so I'm going to take that one off and redo it, and the nice thing with needle tatting, if you don't like it, you just slide the needle down, start over, it's not bad. It's better than having to cut thread and start over from the, from scratch. Okay, and that's the one I'm not counting. And then stitch one, and stitch two. Move this down just a wee bit. And stitch three. Okay, so now we've got all three pico loop, three pico loop, three pico loop, three. Because it's great because every time you make a loop, there's three stitches on either side. So we're going to go ahead and close this one off by bringing the tail around the needle and pulling it through and holding it tight so you don't lose any of your stitches and you don't get a knot. So we're going to pull that as tight as you can without breaking your thread so you get this really small little ring out of it. And what I do for stability purposes is because if you don't, you can, if you don't tie it, you're going to end up having to fight that. So I just go ahead and I make, an, I take the needle through the back and just make a knot and then kind of maneuver the knot in a direction I want so it's still flat. So what we're going to do is for each of these stitches we're going to be sticking the needle in the p original pico loops, loops of the center. For this one since it doesn't have one you can just go from this knot that you made here and we're going to pull the needle over the thread pull the thread over the needle I said it backwards and then I just turn this because you want all of the major part of the stitches to be on the left side. So that's the first half of one, second, first half of two, second half of two, first half of three, second half of three. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a chain that's going to connect to the third um, pico loop of the ring that you just made. So this is where you need your crochet needle, crochet hook. And then I just pull it through, and then if you make too small, you can kind of maneuver your way through it, but you need one so you can see through. Then you're going to pull the crochet hook to where the thread is that's attached to the ball, just visual purposes. And you're going to grab that and pull it through the loop and put it on the needle. And that counts as the first half of the stitch.